All right. Welcome back to Bemis's video series. All right, so today we're going to talk about basic probability rules. We've talked about the idea of probability and what it means. So let's continue the discussion. All right, facts about probability. The probability of any event will always be between 0 and 1. The other way to say it is that the probability of something will always be between 0% oops, and 100%. You cannot have the probability of an event be greater than 100% or less than 0%. It makes no sense. And that's because of the formula that we've used before. The sample space consists of every possible outcome, right? So if there's 36 outcomes like there were in... Um, in the rolling of two dice, right? Then the numerator can be no larger than 36. You can't have some event occurring 37 times out of 36. That makes no sense. Now, that doesn't that's not to say that you can't have 150% in any scenario. You can have you can calculate 150% of someone's previous salary, say $10,000. That would be 1.5 multiplied by the 10,000. So that would mean that the new salary is $15,000. So let's say that last year's salary, last year was 10,000. This year, TY is 15,000. That's fine. 150% of a number is a larger number. But what we're talking about is a probability of something, right? The likelihood cannot exceed 110%, or 100%, excuse me. So when the basketball player says, yeah, I went out there and gave 110%, well, it's an expression, right? Okay. The probability that the outcome will come from the sample space is 100% or 1. So in other words, the sample space accounts for everything that can happen. And it's impossible for something outside the sample space to occur. So let's look at a couple of examples. So this says the probability of this actually means the null set or the empty set. Um, the empty set written as a set is basically set bars with nothing in it. So the probability of nothing happening is zero, which isn't too surprising or shouldn't be too surprising. All right, first example. What is the probability of rolling a one through six on a six-sided die? In other words, the probability of rolling a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six. Well, that would be all six events out of the sample space of six events, which is 100%. So that, was, that went back to this example here. What's the probability of rolling a 7 on a 6-sided die? Well, there are no sides that have 7 holes, so that's impossible. So that would be 0 out of 6, or 0, or 0%. Zero what about the probability that a newborn baby weighs more than the mother? I don't think this is possible. I'm not an expert in health care, but... Think about that. How could the baby weigh more than the mother, right? That makes no sense. So we would say zero on that one. And true or false, the probability of an event is 110% for an event E. Of course, this is false, right? Because that's greater than 1, right? This is 1.1, which is greater than 1, which is impossible. Okay, what does the compliment mean? Oh my, don't you look nice today? No, not that kind of compliment. <laughs> the compliment, compliment of an event accounts for all the events in the sample space that are not in that event. So we denote it E with a little C or E with a bar over it, same thing. So these are all the possible outcomes in the sample space that are not in E. All right. So if I have H with a C, where H stands for heads on tossing a coin, what would the complement of H be? Well, if the sample space of tossing a coin is H and T, what are all the things in this set that are not H? It would be T. So that would be the complement of, of H, or just plain old T. 
Okay, if E is rolling an even number on a six-sided die, then what is the complement of that event? So what I'm asking you is, what are all the things, what are all the events for rolling a six-sided die that are not even? Well, as you know, they're all even or odd, so that would have to be the odd numbers, which is 1, 3, and 5. The sample space is 1 through 6. There's the evens, so 1, 3, and 5 consists of the rest, which, is, which are the odds. Okay, if I take the event as a set and add it to the event's complement, we get the total sample space. So, if I have the event of a queen, let's say, earlier we talked, in the last video, we talked about the probability of getting in a queen, right? How many queens are there in the deck? Actually, let's do it this way. Let me do it this way. I'm, jump, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, so let me start with something else. How about instead, if I was to say, how many queens are there? That's right, there's four queens, right? Well, how many cards are there that are not queens? That's what that means. So this says the number of things in the complement of Q. Well, as you may remember, the, the deck has 52 cards. So wouldn't this be 52 minus 4, which is 48? So what do we have? We have 48 non-queens. There's four queens, so therefore there's 48 non-queens. Aces, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks, kings, and aces. Now the probability of the complement of an event, right, it, this says the probability of an event plus the probability of its complement is the probability of the sample space. But as you know, the sample space accounts for everything. Therefore, we have this rule, the complement rule. The probability of an event added to the probability of its complement is 1. Which, algebraically, you may recall that if x plus y is equal to 1, can we solve that equation for y? That's correct. You can subtract x from both sides, so y is 1 minus x. So what we're going to do here, this is an arrow, by the way, the probability of the complement of an event will be 1 minus the probability of the event, and the probability of an event is 1 minus the probability of its complement. So we did a little bit of simple algebra here. We applied that to the probability rules. Okay? So that's what we're, that's what we're looking at here to determine the complement. That's basically what this says. So earlier we talked about the probability that something was a queen. Well, what's the probability that something isn't a queen? Well, we don't have to count how many non-queens there are. All we have to do is count how many queens there are and subtract that from one. Now we have to do a little bit of fraction subtraction here. Hey, that rhymed. So there were four queens in the deck, 52 cards total. How do we subtract a fraction from a whole number? Well, make that whole number into a fraction with a common denominator of 52. So there's your 48 non-queens out of 52, which we can then simplify to, is that 3 quarters? Or 75%. So the probability that you don't get a, wait, did I do that right? No, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry. The probability of queen was 1 out of 13, so that's 12 thirteenths. My bad. Hey, you know what? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. So 12 thirteenths, and then again, if you want to calculate that as a percentage. All righty. Sorry about this. Just got to open up, there we go, I'm going to open up the TI calculator. Okay, so if I go 12 divided by 13, 92.3%. 
90, 92.3%. Sort of ran out of space there. All right, another example. What is the probability that a rolled pair of dice will not be doubles? Well, remember what doubles meant? Doubles meant a 1 and a 1, or a 2 and a 2, all the way down to 6 and 6. So there were 6 of those out of 36 rolls. Now we can simplify that because that's 1 out of 6. So that's 6 out of 6 minus 1 out of 6, so that's 5 out of 6. There we go. So 5 divided by 6 is 83.3%. So approximately 83.3%. So that means that the probability that you won't run, roll a 1 and a 1, 2 and a 2, all the way up to 6 and a 6, is 83.3%. So I sort of covered it up. So that was, again, the probability of not doubles, which was 1 minus 1 sixth. All right, the addition rule for probability. What about situations where we are calculating the probability of multiple events occurring? So first example, what is the probability that a randomly drawn card from a deck of cards is a queen or a nine? Now, can these things happen at the same time when you draw a single card? The answer is no, because there are queens of spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs, and there are nines of spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. But you can't get a card that's a queen and a nine at the same time, so we call that disjoint. So when two events are disjoint, all we have to do is add their probabilities. So what is the probability of selecting a queen from the deck? Remember, that's 4 out of 52, or 1 13th. What is the probability of selecting a nine from the deck? Same thing. Oops. Same thing. One thirteenth. Okay. So the probability. Uh, let me do this. Let me do this somewhere else. Uh, oops. <laughs> so the probability of probability of queen or nine can be found by using the sum, or adding the two probabilities. That's probability of a queen plus probability of a 9, which is 1 13th plus 1 13th, which is 2 thirteenths. So 2 divided by 13 is 15.4 percent, approximately. <laughs> the other way to think of it is 8 cards, so 8 divided by 52 is also 2 thirteenths. Same answer. Did I say 15.3 or 15.4? Let me double check that. 15.4, okay, so this is actually incorrect because they rounded it wrong they being the people that created the original PowerPoint. I don't want to pass, pass the buck here, but anyway. So this is what I wrote earlier. Oops. This is what I wrote earlier up above. That's how it was calculated. All right, so the addition rule in general, what is the probability that a random drawn card is either a king or a heart? It's a very similar example. This is going to be the probability of a king. In this case, a heart. Is it possible to get a king that's also a heart? In other words, can those two events occur at the same time? The answer is yes, they can. The king of hearts, right? K-H. So the king of hearts is one of the cards. So we have to be careful here. 
we have to be careful here. We don't want to just say it's the probability of a king plus the probability of a heart, which would be 4 out of 52 and 13 out of 52. There's something missing here. That 17 indicates that there are 17 outcomes that are either kings or hearts. Can you think what's the missing piece? The missing piece is that we counted the king of hearts here in these four. We also counted the king of hearts in those 13. So we counted the same card twice. So I have to subtract the probability that we have the king of hearts. That's an H, sorry. Minus 1 out of 52. So that would be 16 out of 52. So looking at the slideshow, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So the king of hearts was counted twice, as I mentioned. Some events have overlapping outcomes. So these are not disjoint events. These are not disjoint events. So when the events are not disjoint, the probability of, let's say, A or B turns out to be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability that the two can occur at the same time or simultaneously, A and B. So here's the sample the space for hearts. Here's the sample space for kings. So you can think about, you know, what what's in the intersection? What things are both kings and hearts and how many of them? Well, there's one, which is the king of hearts. So <laughs> there you go. K heart, king of hearts. So when two events are disjoint, we use, this is the Venn diagram we use. This is event A, this is event B. When they have no overlap at all, we say that they're disjoint. That means that they cannot occur at the same time. When they're not disjoint, they actually have an intersection. So the first example we gave was a queen and a nine. Those are disjoint, right? So Q and nine, they're disjoint. King and heart were not disjoint because they have an intersection. Okay. So disjoint events have this rule, right? If they're disjoint, you just add their probabilities. Anything else that actually overlaps, use this rule, as we mentioned before. So here's what it looks like using the using rule two. The probability of a king or a heart will be the probability of king, which is four out of 52, plus the probability of a heart, which is 13 out of 52, minus the probability that we have the king of hearts, which is one out of 52. Four plus 13 is 17, minus one is 16. So as I mentioned a minute ago, it's 16 out of 52. which is thirty point eight percent approximately. That means the probability of selecting a card from a deck that's either a king or a heart is about thirty one percent. And that concludes the video. <laughs>